Hello Drew, and I made this video to go over uh, the horse riding that I helped script uh, last night. Uh, it was a pretty complex set of functions and I messed up a few times, but... Alright, so, here's the steps that were involved. Uh, first, you have to set uh, the horse to ownership on the horse itself to Clara. You have to create a horse uh, follow uh, Clara package on the horse. You have to create a duplicate uh, Clara follow player package on Clara. You have to create a quest reference alias uh, in your follow quest. You have to create a horse riding global uh, that will be used to control the logic. You have to create a scene and follow quest that will do the whistle. You will have to uh, change the follow uh, quest script in order to support what you want to do. Um, and then there needs to be a few other scripts added, uh, one in the end fragment of the scene to say what the global value is going to be, and then one at the scene's end to actually do the work, and then due to how your quest starts up, you have to recreate the .seq file. So step one, uh, set the horse ownership. So. In the object window, uh, whenever you see your horse in the world, it will have a little ownership drop down. Um, this needs to be set to Clara because Bethesda wants to simulate, uh, or simulate, excuse me, <laughs> the legal horses versus stealing a horse logic that you see on the players. So, if we go over to the creation kit, and we open up the horse, you'll have your 3D data over here, several other tabs that you can switch between. So what we're interested in is in the ownership tab. And this is where you will set Clara underscore actor as the owner of the horse. So now Maya is Clara's horse. The next step is to create a horse follow Clara package. This is a little weird and counterintuitive. Why does the horse need to follow Clara? But my th belief is that Bethesda uses that to know, oh, the player or the character might want to be on the horse if the package allows for it. So Let's go back to the creation kit. And then under character and package, we have all of these packages. Um, I created two different packages for the horse. Let's look at the follow package though. So it's just using a default follow and we set uh, Clara actor as the follow target. And there are there's a condition here, I'll cover the condition later since we mentioned the globals. And as another step, you might have seen the other package. Um, it's just a sand, basic sandbox package to where the horse location is currently. It's just because you don't want uh, Maya to necessarily follow Clara around. Okay, and now uh, this is going to seem weird at first, but makes sense uh, once thinking about it. Uh, Clara's follow player package. Um, there's a field called Rice Ride Horse question mark, and this is used to just say, are you allowed to be on a horse while following or not? So we need two different packages, one with your same behavior at the moment of not riding a horse, and then another one to where, okay, uh, Clara can ride on a horse. So due to the use of both a follow package and a template, we have to do this in two different spots. So let's look at the original uh, follow package. And in here, you'll see the ride horse 
click on it and then there will be a checkbox to say whether it's true or not. In the conditions tab we have the same condition for when the uh, Clara should follow the player and we also have the global here that will be used to control when this should work. Um, let's look at the second one. So notice that the condition here is a little different. This is to see, okay, is Claire supposed to be riding or not? And if we go back to the package itself, if we look at ride horse, it says false. And then we need to look at the template itself since you are using a package template. And in these fields, you'll see the same true or false. Um, I didn't do anything with the conditions since there wasn't anything changed on that in the first place. I left that as is, so I didn't break anything. But those are the main uh, changes you need in terms of packages. Alright, the next step is to set up Clara as a reference alias to the quest. It's because uh, scenes require all actors and entities to be defined as something that can be assigned actions uh, such as dialogue quests or timers. So, going back to the creation kit, let's look for the quest tab. Then uh, the follow quest, if we look at the t across the top, you have quest data. We want the quest aliases. You can right click to add a new reference alias. Um, let's open up Clara's reference alias. So here, uh, find an alias for Clara called Clara underscore actor underscore ref. And uh, we need to allow for Clara. Uh, alias to be reusable in the quest in the event that you do more than just the horse whistling and then we need to define well what is this alias supposed to be so I set it to uh, Clara's reference in the world which is currently um, on my ESP inside of uh, Markarth's city gates Alright, the next uh, step is an important one because it controls uh, your packages, um, the scene, and uh, the game update logic. And this is a horse riding global. I used a global so you can use it in multiple locations. You could use it for future dialogue if you so desire to have some sort of uh, commentary while she's riding on a horse. Um, it just opens up a lot of possibilities and it's used to control the core functionality of Clara being able to ride on a horse. So let's look at the global as it's defined in here. Under miscellaneous you'll see global. I defined uh, the horse riding global as Clara horse riding var. And currently it's defaulted to zero, but that will change the very first time that you run the uh, logic for the whistle. And uh, there's two important states to remember about this global, um, whether Clara's writing or whether Clara's not writing. Um, so one is what I I decided for the not writing and two is what I decided for writing. You can always change that at any point if you want something that makes more sense to you. Uh, it's just it is easier to think of two numbers close together at the time. No, oh, sorry. Okay, the next step is to create the scene that will be in the follower quest. Um, the scene, you're basically going to have an action where uh, Claire is going to go and whistle, and that's the only thing that will happen at this point. Um, you can add other things if you wanted to, like some sort of custom animation, whatever. Scenes are a very powerful tool, but it takes a while to get used to them. 
So let's go back to the creation kit to look at the scenes tab on the quest. Okay, if you look across the top, you have the favor dialog. Scenes is going to be right next to it. On the left-hand side, you'll have the list of any scenes that are attached to the quest. The right-hand side will show the contents of whatever scene you have selected. So let's select the horse whistle. There's only one phase inside of this uh, scene, and that is the whistle itself. <laughs> and you can add actors by right-clicking New Actor. You can add actions by right-clicking inside of an actor and then doing new action and then if you want to add another uh, phase to the scene you right-click outside of it add phase at end or insert before And again, this goes over what I was uh, saying a moment ago. I'll include a copy of this PowerPoint in uh, the link I uh, provide. Okay. Uh, step seven is to change the follow quest script. Uh, this is the script that you have uh, to initialize the force greeting. I piggybacked off of that script in order to integrate uh, the horse riding logic. Uh, so what happens is you set the stage to five and then I go around immediately after that and register a game timer update event. <laughs> um, so I use the smallest time window possible for this event. Uh, 15 in-game minutes, it translates to less than a second, which is quicker than on update if you've uh, heard about that particular event before. So I'm going to use Notepad++ because it's a little bit more colorful to look at. Um, in a moment. Uh, let's see. Okay, so inside uh, the update game time, uh, we want to make sure that the script doesn't run in the event somebody uninstalls the mod, uh, just to clean up their script cache. Um, so what I decided to do was check to see if Clara still exists in their world, um, and if not, it disables uh, the update check. Um, and then we do a logic check to see what stage the quest is at to see if Clara is a valid follower yet or not. And then within that check, if it succeeds, you're going to do four different scenario checks. Uh, and goes through these uh, step by step. So first it will go through the player is on horse, Clara is not, player is on horse, Clara is on horse, player is not, Clara is on horse, and player is not, Clara is not. So let's look at scenario one. Uh, scenario one is the player is on horse but Clara is not. This is where uh, that scene that we were looking at earlier will be called. Um, we use a force start function call to terminate anything Clara is doing at the moment, whether it be dialogue, uh, some sort of script, etc and she will do the horse call whistle. Scenario two, this is where they're both on the horse. Um, we don't really need to do anything, so the event will just not call anything inside of this section. And hopefully the player and uh, Clara are riding along peacefully. Scenario three, uh, this is where the player has gotten off their horse, but Clara is still on her horse. So we have several steps that have to happen in quick order. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is make sure the global is set back to not writing so the scene can be called in the future. Uh, next, we have to make sure the horse, Maya, evaluates whether uh, Clara should be followed still or not. Next, we need to make sure Clara uh, evaluates whether she should be writing or not on the horse. And finally, uh, if she's still on the horse dismount from Maya and then for the final scenario we have uh, where they are both not riding on a horse and this is going to be the same as scenario two we don't call anything 
and uh, they're going to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, so uh, now if I go back to Notepad++, let's see. Uh, let me see if I can make this bigger at all. Unfortunately, no. Okay. So, I tried to comment where I could so I could explain what everything was being used for. Um, here's your on event here at the top, and this is where we register for that 15 uh, minutes of in game time. And then we have the actual update game time down below that. And you, if, starting from the top, here is uh, checking to see if Claire is still in the world. And then we unregister from this event if she is not. Um, and then we do the follower check <laughs> as well. Okay, what to do next? <laughs> Uh, if it succeeds, we then go through the four different scenarios. Uh, the first scenario here is where the scene will be called. Second scenario, we have nothing here. And then the third scenario, we have the global getting set back. We have uh, the horse evaluating what they should be doing. We have Clara evaluating what she should be doing. And then finally we have the dismounting logic here in the event that she is still on Maya. And then four is uh, again something else that we're not going to have anything happen. And then if Clara is not a follower, if the player hasn't met Clara yet, we just eat that uh, call and basically nothing will happen and it will just keep the timer rolling. And see this script actually inside of the creation kit. Go to the property section here. And this uh, is Clara right here. I used uh, the reference that's uh, in the Markarth origin. We have the follow quest uh, as a reference. We have uh, the horse whistle scene as a reference. We have the horse uh, from Markarth area as a reference, and then we have the global as a reference. So we need to add two more supporting scripts that can use the script that we just changed uh, drastically. So the first place we'll need to make a change is at the end of the whistle sequence. So, going back to the creation kit, we go into the actual dialogue sequence. Um, and then at the bottom is where the in fragment is, and we're calling the global. In the event that you didn't have anything down here, what you can do is do something like this, and then compile, and it will appear on the left or uh, right hand side. Then you could go into advanced, rename the script, and then you could go over here, click on properties, and then add your property before you write. Uh, segment below that. And the last script that needs to be added is uh, what happens at the end of the scene. This is where the meat of what's going to happen or the magics. So uh, of the horse appearing and then Clara 
riding the horse happens. So the steps we want to do in order is to summon the horse, have uh, the script wait so the game can catch up with everything involved with summoning the horse, and then tell the scene where the whistle has occurred to stop and reset itself to for future use. So inside of your summon horse call, uh, you're going to have a few things happen. Uh, the horse will be moved to Clara, and then Clara and Maya will both evaluate what they should be doing at the time. So, just to have everything in one place, I placed uh, that function inside of the force greet. Uh, notice there's a summon horse here, and it basically goes through the steps. And I have uh, this script also wait an extra amount of time just so the game can catch up with everything that's going on at the same time. Uh, that can be tweaked if you think it's too long. Uh, sorry. So on the scene itself, <laughs> We have uh, the papyrus fragment. Um, first, we'll want to set the end on conditions up here to be when the global is set to writing or higher If in the event that you decide to use additional values in the future. Um, so this is where we make the summon horse call and then we do a stop scene call. So if we look uh, here at the end, there's a stop scene. Basically, it checks to see if the scene's still playing. If it is, stop it. And then the last step that needs to be done is uh, regenerate the sequence file. This is due to uh, the quest being set to start on game enabled. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I'm just going to go through where mine is at. I use TS5 edit now to generate my uh, SEQ files, right click on it and then select none and then go through the list to find um, your mod, click OK <laughs> and then once everything is loaded up you right click on Clara, go to other and generate SEQ and it will add it automatically to your Skyrim folder. Um, that is uh, all that I have put together for going over this. Um, if you want to go over details uh, feel free to message me on it and if you need any tweaks feel free to message me as well.